this is what I want. You know, on every warm-up rep, on every set, I want to make sure that they are getting their elbows up and that they're learning to kind of relax that, you know, that death grip on the bar that they get into that position. And I'm not really concerned, like I'm more concerned with whether or not they can do that than I am with the weight that's on the bar. Because ultimately from an Olympic lifting standpoint, the, what matters is how it looks. Because if it looks good, it is. If it doesn't look good, it isn't. There's really no way around that with the clean. Because no one, and fundamentally, because no one's going to clean 300 pounds like this. If they are, they're going to have to take their wrists and wrap their wrists, because their wrists are really going to hurt. When they're holding 300 pounds in their hands like this on their chest, it's extremely uncomfortable. Anybody who's going to get good at the Olympic lifts, like we want, you know, because again, I'm looking at these kids and saying, these Winchester High kids, these Malden Catholic kids, should be able to clean, I would say, in the neighborhood of one and a half times their body weight, eventually. You know, so you know, a 200 pound guy would clean 300 is pretty strong. So one of these kids, 180 pound guy, I would expect those kids to clean 270. If we don't teach them how to rack the bar properly, they will never be able to do that. They will fight that forever. And eventually they'll start not wanting to do it because their wrist will hurt. Eventually they'll look at you and be like, you know, can I take my wrist? You have wrist wraps, my wrist is killing me. And I want to see this. And I want to look and think, wow, that looks really, really good. Their warm-ups look really, really good. If I watch Rebel, you know, four of the heavy set, and all of a sudden, on four of the heavy set, you know, it gets a little, okay. And then they push it up into the rack position. I'm not going to have a problem with that. But I am going to have a problem when rep one of their warm-up set ends up in that kind of low bar carry, hands on the bar type situation. You've got to get people to get to this position. That is, it is the singularly most important thing that we're doing. And again, by fault, I have not emphasized that enough clearly. There's nothing more important than the rack position of the bar. Probably the only thing that's more important than the rack position of the bar is getting them in the right position to pull the bar. If we can get them in the right position to pull the bar and get them in the rack position, everything else is probably going to be okay. If we can't, you know, again, we don't very rarely do I look and see, okay, this person's out of position. In the pull part, it's all in the catch part that we're not getting. And that's where if you go through that sort of pen lay video, the one thing that pen lay does better than everybody else, you know, we've got to get people to think, they want their, if you pull your shoulders back and you roll your wrists under, watch what happens to my shoulders. Right? My humerus actually internally rotates a little bit as my wrists roll under. That gets me in exactly the position that I want to be in. So when we've got people up here, we've got to think, retract, roll under. The thing that Pendley did, it does better than what I did in all honesty, is he doesn't tell people to slide the bar down their thighs initially. All he told them from here, bend your knees. So now they're in really a high hand clean position. Their chest is probably maybe just over the bar. And then from there, all it is is jump and catch. But it's not the jump, but we gotta be, they gotta get this. They've gotta learn to relax the bar, get the bar up into their throat, get their elbows up, and be able to do that. That's what I'm gonna try to go out and say, okay, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to jump on that vertex as high as I can, but I'm gonna look at my shoes the whole time. You wouldn't jump very high. When you explain it to them that way, they kind of like, oh, okay. I understand now why my head has to be up. Because there is some, you know, there's some human nature to this. I guess it's so they can see what their hands are doing. I don't really know. Maybe they're looking, okay, you know, I can look at my hands, I can see what my hands are supposed to be doing right now. But a lot of the kids will pull their chin down and look either at their hands or at their feet. First thing again, what we're telling them to do, look at yourself directly in the mirror, shoulders back, so I'm here the whole time. I'm not here. They should be able, they should be in visual contact with themselves the entire time. They should see themselves throughout the entire lift. If that became problematic for them, have them turn around. But still have them look and say, okay, if you don't want to look at yourself, you know, look right out there at that sign on the wall, you know, the walk for hunger sign. I want you looking right at that walk for hunger sign, and I want you to be able to jump and sit that way. You know, if you really felt like, you know, they get too distracted by looking at themselves in the mirror. I don't think, again, I'm not, I think the mirror helps as opposed to hurts anyway, so I would not advocate that. But the point is, they should be able to see themselves the whole time. And they should, when you finish, because that, and that's the beauty of Olympic lifting. You should be able to look at this. You should be able to look right away. I don't care. Right now, if I said to you, you know nothing about Olympic lifting. If I did that, 
you would know, okay, that wasn't good. You would look at that and think, I don't know anything about Olympic lifting, but I know something about sports, and there was nothing that looked athletic about what I just did, right? So it's not that hard. So when you're looking at it, you see somebody and do that, you're like, okay, that was pretty good. That looked athletic. The easiest way to judge jumping and or Olympic lifting, or really probably anything we're doing in here, does it look athletic. If it doesn't look athletic, it's not. If it doesn't look athletic, it needs more coaching attention. It needs you to take the time to correct that. And to realize that, like I said, particularly with, really with any of the major muscle group stuff, multi-joint stuff, we're going to be coaching the same things. You know, I've said this over and over again. We could put on a tape that said the same things. You know, chest up, back tight, you know, get your abs tight, get out over the bar. You know, you could just tape somebody saying all that stuff and just stick it on. And it would probably work a whole lot of the time. Because the things that you're saying are fundamentally the same over and over and over again. It's just beginning to the ability to develop the eye and look and say, which one applies to this person at this time? 